In this lesson, we'll begin to layer additional colors and value into our character's boots. All right, great. So this is kind of where we ended up on the left here uh, in the previous lesson. I went ahead and brought the one on the right to about the exact same spot. This character's got two boots. There's no reason for me to show you how to paint them both when we're doing pretty much the exact same things here. So uh, with that said, um, I've cleaned up the edges a little bit as well here. But in kind of looking at our boots, I'm seeing that they're very, very warm and uh, have a lot of yellows and oranges in them. Don't have a lot of reds and uh, deeper burgundy type colors in them as well. So we're going to try and work some of those in in this lesson as well as darken some areas up on these. So um, again, we're planning out our highlights uh, and, and trying, kind of steering clear of those areas as we're getting darker and darker. So uh, let's come over here to maybe our reds and see if we can't maybe start to layer some of these in. I'm going to come over here and make sure my colorless blender's turned off. And it might be a good idea to go for something a little more desaturated than this one. So uh, this one right here is kind of an in-between between this color and these, these uh, uh, yellows and oranges that we've got going on right now. So we could start to kind of come in with something like that. But you're going to see here that there's not a lot of difference in value between this color and what we've already begun to lay down. So uh, might be a good idea. Let's go ahead and stick to the boot on the left here. I'm going to come in and maybe just kind of layer that in in some of these areas. Just really lightly coming along. Starting to introduce some reds. Now I'm also kind of steering clear of blending for the moment. I want to get the colors in there that I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to work together. So uh, let's come in and maybe grab a more of a purple color here. And I'm going to start to kind of bring that in as well. And I'm going to kind of bounce around just a little bit here. I'm going to come back over here and kind of start to work one of these orange colors that uh, we started off with. And I'm going to get a little closer to that highlight. Um, this particular highlight kind of stops right there. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of fill in that area where the highlight is not planned to be. I'm also going to have kind of an area right here where maybe not quite that wide, but where the shadow from this folded over edge is going to be cast down. So that highlight is definitely not going to be there. So I might even come in and shrink my brush down a little bit, start to hit that. All right, great. Now, I'm not going to go too dark with that particular area. I'm going to come back over here instead and continue to work some of these purples. Now, um, might come in and grab more of a desaturated purple, something like that. And let's say, well, let's start to blend some of these together. We've got a lot of different colors working. Now, again, hitting it with a blender just like that is going to start to desaturate a little bit because the blender is soaking up some of the pigment. Uh, so if, if you notice a little bit of desaturation happening when you start to blend colors together, it's probably because your blender is uh, picking up some of the pigment. So uh, once you've run that over it a few times, hopefully that will that effect will fade. All right. Starting to come in here and just kind of uh, smudge some of these things together, blending the hues together. That's going to give us a good idea of kind of where we need to go in terms of uh, both value and color temperature. And I'm going to come in here, use my eraser, just kind of run it along this edge really quickly. Just like so. Looks like I, I zipped it a little bit too much into the area I didn't want to erase. So we'll just undo that with a control Z. All right, so that boot's starting to come together. It's starting to look pretty good. Uh, I'm going to actually hit control zero to center up my canvas again. All right, great. That's actually looking really, really good. But I think we still need to bring in some more reds and some more purples. So um, knowing that, we're going to come in here and let's go ahead and turn off our colorless blender. 
and just start to kind of layer some of these colors in. Now we're also getting darker, so keeping that in mind, uh, being really mindful about how quickly we get darker. Might come in here and bring in maybe some of this purple here. Let's see what that looks like when we blend it in. Another thing that's probably a, a good thing to let you know is if you are not sure about a color, maybe you think a, a color might work, it's much easier to put it into a small spot like I just did right there, and then maybe you do your blending before you cover all of the areas with it. Uh, that way you'll know if it's going to work or not. This one actually worked pretty well. I'm going to start running some of these purples into the shadow side. Might need to get darker and a little more saturated with that as well. And maybe bring in some more of these reds. All right, that's starting to look pretty nice. Let's come in here now and blend a little bit of this together. As you can see here, my blender is fairly dirty. Now that got pretty saturated pretty quick, so I'm actually going to undo back a couple of times here. And let's, actually I don't even think I had my colorless blender on. <laughs> let's go ahead and try that with the blender turned on. A lot of times I'll get in a little bit of a hurry and I'll reach over there and I'll think I have enabled it and uh, it's actually not. So looks like that was what happened right there, but that's okay. Just all things that you should be aware of when uh, working quickly here with these markers. All right, so that boot's starting to look pretty good. Now, the highlights on that boot are starting to really jump out at me. And uh, every little corner of those is pretty crisp, and the highlights are really pretty prominent. So um, it might be time to come in here and uh, think about maybe running some color right up here for one we'll come in here a fairly small brush kind of start to hit that edge up there actually need to probably bring a shadow in right under there as well and we're just going to kind of gradually get darker and darker here now I went pretty dark with a blob there in this little experimental area. We're going to come in and just blend that together and see what that looks like. And I'm okay with that. So uh, I'm going to kind of extend that color on down. Again, thinking about the areas uh, where the shadows are going to collect. So let's say that this particular heel doesn't have any kind of a highlight on it, which is really kind of unlikely, but at this point we haven't really planned for it, so okay with me. We're not going for extreme realism here. All right, great. So uh, let's come in here and jump back up in the value uh, scale a little bit. Go a little bit lighter here and see if maybe we can't tone some of these highlights down some. So uh, I'm going to come in here maybe with something like this. Start to hit this edge over here. And I tell you what, something that we might be a good thing to think about is that a lot of times specular highlights aren't crisp around every little edge of that highlight. A lot of times it'll be crisp in one area, but in, a, in another area it'll smear and kind of uh, fade off or, or feather off. So we could kind of create that effect here by just coming in and blending this one edge of our highlight. Sort of like that. You can see it's starting to kind of extend the highlight a little bit, but uh, with a little bit of creative blending here, we can kind of feather that highlight a little bit and kind of minimize its dominance there. So uh, that's a lot better, I think, a lot, a lot more realistic, not near as um, prominent. So I might come in and start to think about doing the same type of deal right over here kind of blending the area around the highlight first, just to kind of choke in on it a little bit, clean the edges of the highlight. Just like so. And this particular highlight, it doesn't bother me that it is uh, 
crisp all the way around just simply because it's right there on the edge of the boot right along kind of her pinky toe and those small toes right there on the outside edge so um, doesn't bother me too much and this highlight right here we could probably come in and actually darken some of these areas around it a little bit more and let's do this let's come in and get our colorless blender again and we're going to kind of feather this edge right here So there's a little bit of a gradation to it. And we might come over and do the same thing right here just to kind of extend that back. Every highlight doesn't need to be just absolutely jumping off of the canvas at us. So, um, all right, great. So this is looking pretty good so far. Um, and what I'd like to do at this point is go ahead and move on to the next lesson. And again, like I said before, I'm going to go ahead and work the other boot and kind of get it to this exact same spot we're at here. What I'd like to do, though, is in the next lesson, pick up where we're leaving off here and really focus on fine tuning the deepest of the shadows here, cleaning up a few areas uh, as well before we jump in and move on to the laces. So uh, we'll get started with that in the next lesson.